All right. Thank the Lord for providing for uh, Brother Wade's uh, needs there at the print shop and uh, Brother Brother Ball as well. Uh, there in no, nobody, uh, you know, knows what it would be like to, to have, have a ministry like Brother Ball's. I mean, you know, seems like, you know, year after year after year, it just, it, you know, most, most people would have given up, but not Brother Ball. Uh, I mean, he's, he's dedicated to stick it out uh, for the long run, you know. <clears throat> he doesn't have to have a, a huge church to be a successful pastor. And uh, you know, I think I think that uh, some of the some of the pastors that just stuck it out and uh, and and kept kept going through the, the day by day and didn't get discouraged, but just kept trusting the Lord. I believe when they get to heaven, they'll be a well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, he he and he, he may not have been supposed to have a thousand member church but may, but he's he may have been a great uh uh help to those that were around him blooming where you're planted i think that's where you where it goes but uh, thank thank the lord for our missionaries and for uh for brother ball and uh and for for his uh they they've you know they, they've got a lot of health problems too uh and uh so i'm thankful for uh for what God can do uh, in their life. And so we will keep them bared up in prayer. Amen. And uh, tonight we're in chapter number 36, and uh, I'm hoping to cover chapter 37 as well. And you, you may think, uh, well, uh, you know, I don't think you can do it. Well, let's just see. <laughs> Might be able to. Chapter 36. Uh, the, the work's finally going to begin. They've been talking about this project for a long time. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you're, uh, you, know, you get this idea in your head and you're saying, well, I think I want to build a, a building out back of my house. And, uh, you know, and you may even sit down and draw a picture of what you think it ought to look like. But then so somehow that, that picture will get put back in a drawer somewhere and, you'll, and, uh, th and three years later, You'll be saying, one of these days, I'm going to build that building out back. One of these days, we're going to get it done. Uh, Israel is, uh, you know, they, they've been told twice what this thing is supposed to look like. What this temple, this tabernacle that they're building is supposed to look like. They, they've been told twice. Now it's time to get busy and get the work done. They, they've collected up all the, all the things that they need. Uh, they, they've gotten gotten it all. As a matter of fact, they brought so much stuff that uh, Moses had to stop and tell them, "Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! This, we we got plenty now. We we don't need you to keep bringing stuff in, uh, brother David. You're running into that now. Uh, with people have been bringing clothes in, and every every Sunday, uh, I mean every Wednesday night, there's probably a a, a gift sitting on the <laughs> up there on the uh, in front of the doors and uh, another bag of clothes." Uh, you know, and uh, and and uh, that that's that's wonderful. Uh, uh, but you know, it, it, uh, it we're, we're not in that kind of ministry right here, right now, are we? Uh, but you know what? It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing that people are wanting to share with other people. Amen. So uh, thank the Lord that uh, they see us as a place uh, that uh, that we can get in touch with people and get and get the, what people need sometimes. All right, and so uh, the fabrication of the tabernacle begins. Chapter 36 and verse 1. Then wrought Bez Bezaleel and, and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord had uh, put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. Now, there, there, there were the, you know, he was the general contractor, his name was Bezaleel. And so we, we have the foreman of the job. That was Aholiab. And uh, they, they, had, uh, they were to get everything together. And uh, they were to get ready for the workers that were going to come uh, that God had already put into their hearts the desire to do the work. 
You know, we, we've got some workers like that in this church. I mean, we've got some men that, uh, you know, they, they've got the skills and uh, they've got the heart to do the work. And I'm thankful for that. I'll tell you what. Uh, so the people brought each morning offerings for the building of the tabernacle until uh, it was too much. And they, they just kept bringing it. And they just kept bringing it. You know, uh, we, we have a church that's like that. I believe that if, if you tell, tell there's a need, and they'll bring it. If, if there's a need for the, for the, to the children's home, uh, we bring the food. Bring, bring all the things that they need. For, for, for several other, other projects that, uh, that goes on too. And so I'm thankful for, for that. Uh, but there was enough t- to finish the work. And that's all you need is enough to get the job done. And, uh, you know, that, this is, this, I mean, it took a lot of stuff for this. This is not just a, a small job. This, this is one of the, those jobs that, uh, that could easily get out of hand if you didn't, didn't have someone who knew what they were doing to get, get everything organized and get it all done the, the way that God wanted it, not the way that they thought was the best way to do it. You know, and I'm thankful for that, too, that, uh, that God had a man who was, uh, whose name was Bezaleel, and obviously he knew how to get the job done the way that God wanted it done. All right, and so as, as they, uh, verse 3, and, uh, they said, uh, uh, and they received of Moses all the offering which the Lord had brought, uh, the children of Israel had brought to the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Hey, that was, that was you know, it was just more. It was just more coming in. Now all the wise men that wrought with the work of the sanctuary came every, every man from his work, which they made, and, uh, and, and they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work, which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Don't bring any more. We got enough. Everything is, is, this is good. Uh, The stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. And, and uh, I'm just I'm just gonna I'm gonna give you a little bit from from a couple of chapters over. They they brought a bunch a, a bunch more than than uh, than they really needed, uh, and uh, and the the num- the amount of gold they brought was twenty nine talents of gold. I mean, knows what a talent is? It's, it's three thousand shekels. <laughs> it's a weight. It's not really, it's not a monetary thing. Uh, but uh, uh, I looked on the, on, online, and uh, at, at this particular time, gold is, is $1,842 for a troy ounce. Now, now, they had 29 talents of gold plus a bunch of shekels left over. And they had uh, they they uh, they had plenty, uh, plenty of things, uh, plenty to go on. As a matter of fact, of the of gold and silver and brass, uh, they had 114 tons, 226 pounds. Hey, man, that's a lot. That's a lot of you know. I tried to figure it out, and my little calculator wouldn't work uh, past uh, so many digits, and uh, you know. And I don't know how much that was worth in today's uh, market, but I, I believe it was worth, worth a whole bunch. And, uh, but, but that's not what God was trying to teach us about. God was trying to teach us that we need to bring enough for the work. It needs to be enough to get the job done. You know, we, we heard in the scriptures about the man that didn't count the cost uh, of, for building his uh, tower in his, in his vineyard. He didn't count the cost. And, uh, you know, and people broke in. Why? Because he couldn't finish the job of building the tower so that there could be no one to watch uh, over, the, over the vineyard. And people broke in and, and stole everything they had. And, uh, and then there was others that they mentioned that, uh, that, uh, that they was in the same situation. And so God gave them a, a heart to bring in everything that was needed 
to get the job done. And so they, they, they did, and uh, every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen of blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cu a cunning work made he them. They, they, did, they did this uh, without having a bunch of detailed drawings uh, about how that, uh, they were supposed to do it. They, they had what Moses told them that God had said, and uh, they were to build. But God was, God was in them working to do this as well. And, uh, and so the, the, the whole, the whole uh, job, the linen curtains that were there, uh, and uh, so there, there was enough to, uh, to finish all of this and, and more. And so all these wise-hearted men we're, we're getting the job done now. They, they, were, they began the work. Now, I don't know how many, I don't know how many months it took to, for everybody to do their work and get it all back together. But can, can you imagine what it would have been like if, if, uh, if, if it had been in a Baptist church and, and they had a, a th say they had 500 people in the church and all 500 people was going to bring in another, a little piece of the work and, uh, and, and what it would look like? Uh, it, it might not be such a pretty sight uh, because I don't think we are, uh, you know, we, we're as close to God as we think we are. <laughs> but if God was in you doing the work, it would be different. Uh, but that's what God did. Out there in the middle of the desert, they had absolutely no Walmart to go to, no, no Home Depot, no Lowe's. They had nobody to go to to get all these things. They just had to get it, and they had to make it all themselves. And, uh, and what, a, what a monumental effort this was for them to do it. Uh, and uh, and as, he, as he goes down in uh, chapter number uh, 36 and, uh, and about verse number 9, uh, he tells exactly the same dimensions that Moses was told on the mountain twice. Twice. God, God gave him all of this de detailed instruction and they and, and he had to get it to the people, and then they had to be, to make it. And that, that was a wonderful uh, thing to see. All of the people had a mind to work, but not everybody worked. Last week we we showed how that uh, there there was uh, that an, an, all of the people came and heard what God said they were to do, and some people came back with with gifts in their hands. But not everybody came back with that. And not everybody was, was, was sold out on, uh, on how to build this, uh, that building this, this, this edifice for, for God to dwell in. You know, I, I've been in churches that, that decided they, were, they, were, they needed to build. Oh, my goodness. That, that's, that's almost like the kiss of death for a pastor. <laughs> he just... He might as well mark it up. There's going to be some dis dissension in the in the in the crowd. I don't. I don't think we ought to build one that big. I, I don't think we're going to need that. I don't think we're going to. You know, I, we need we need to do something uh, with this building. We 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 were in a church that was running over at the gills. I mean, that was running over everywhere, and uh, and the pastor said, uh, "We we need to build. We need to do it quick." And and uh, you know the bucket brigade got out and tried to put a fire uh, to put the fire out. Uh, they they wanted to get uh, whole things done, you know, but they wanted it done, uh, you know, somewhere else. If y'all want to go build a church somewhere else, why don't y'all do it? And we'll stay here, you know. What a sad thing it is when people are not on on the same page with God. What a sad thing it is. But, but uh, you know, and, uh, you know, the church got built, but the pastor also had to leave after the church got built. You know, what a sad thing it was. I th I'd, I'd love to see, you know, what God could do with, with a group of people that were completely sold out to him. Uh, but I've never seen that in the church. And one day, maybe, uh, may maybe uh, uh, we'll be able to see that. That'd be wonderful. Then, so the, the fabrication of the church starts. And uh, it starts with the linen curtains. 
uh, for the, the actual tent itself. Now, he calls, calls one thing the tabernacle, and he calls the tent. Uh, and there's, there, he's calling the tent all those coverings that went over the top. Uh, but but they, they, were, they were the tent-like uh, aspect of this tabernacle. But the rest of it was b- boards and, and uh, bars and sockets and tenons and, and all those kind of things that, uh, that the guys on the, on the new Yankee workshop uh, would tell you about, you know, tenons and things like that. I wouldn't have known what a tenon was if I hadn't heard old, old uh, I don't know what's his name, uh, telling us about it. You know, and, and he, he'd, uh, he'd, he'd tell us that, uh, you know, you got these tenons and you put them in this, this thing this way and, and uh, you know, it, it locks it together. See, God, God was smarter than, than everybody thinks. God knew exactly how to make this thing work. I mean, you're out in the middle of the desert. The wind blows at the, in the desert. You, you know, everything, everything is, is it's really, you know, it's, it's a hard thing uh, building out in a place like that. But they, they got the job done. All right, and so he, uh, he tells that, and he told, they told him just exactly how to make those things and to make them where they could couple them all together. And so they made all these curtains, and they coupled them all together, and they, and they made, it was like one solid sheet that went all the way across. And, uh, and, uh, and then, then they made the things that, that, that attached them together. Uh, they called them tatches, and they were of gold, and they coupled the curtains one to another, so it became one tabernacle. And then... Then he, then he told about the fabrication of the curtains of goat's hair. Now, this was the next layer on the, on the, the roof there that they, they made, and, and uh, they, they had, they had the, the linen, then they had the goat's hair. And, and, uh, and they made that, and, and it, it attached together just like the other one did. And uh, everything was made uh, exactly as God had, had made it, for the, told them to make it. And as you know, you can't beat that. I mean, I've, I've read I've, I've read d- uh, drawings and plans and things like that before, and I can see, you know, I can I can kind of read some of the things, but somebody hands me an electrical schematic, you know, and I'm you know I look at it and I say, okay, <laughs> uh, you know, and and uh, I say here you, you know, I, I I would just tell somebody else to do it, you know, but but if you know if it's Drawn of a sewer line, I could, I and mean, I can, I can tell where that was. Yeah, it's in the ground, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Notice that, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and so he, uh, <clears throat> he he they made everything just just to fit together exactly perfect. I mean, they didn't have a. There was not one single uh, little pulled place in the in this whole this whole edifice that they built there was not a place where the the there was a little ruffle in the in the curtain everything was perfect and it hung exactly right and and it, and it came back together at, when they went and and took it down and moved to another place and put it back together it went together exactly like it did the first time they put it together now people can't do that i mean humans can't do that but God, but God, you know, I like the, that uh, divine conjunction, but God. And uh, God takes care of things the way that only he can do it. And so they, there was 50 tatches of brass in that. It wasn't gold, but brass. And why is that? Because nobody could see it anyway. But brass is, is a picture, is a, is, a, is a type of judgment. And there's a judgment coming. For this world, and uh, and so uh, we see this in the in the brass that was used there, and then there were two other coverings for the tent tabernacle. One was a covering of of uh, of, of red, and uh, and uh, what that was was rams skins dyed red, and and so it was there, but you couldn't see it either. From just looking at it from the outside, you you'd never be able to see that. But, but it, was to, it was to be dyed red, and that represents the blood that our wonderful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for us 
on the cross at Calvary. And, and then the, the, last, the last one was called badger's skins. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of document, uh, co commentaries on this, and, and uh, nobody has a, a real good clue about what these badger skins were. How many's ever seen a badger? Brother David? Brother David's seen a badger. Where'd you see it? On TV? <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Without TV, we're, we're, we're done for. I mean, who's ever, who, who's ever seen a badger? We've never seen, a, 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 there was nothing about badgers talked about in the, uh, in the Old Testament uh, other than right there, badger skins. Well, it, it, uh, it may not be badgers after all uh, because whatever the word was in Hebrew, it didn't translate over too well. And so they, they called them badger skins uh, because I guess a badger skin was just kind of nondescript. It was just kind of like uh, uh, nothing to, to uh, it wasn't real fancy. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see this on a real uh, nice tent out in the, in the wilderness. But these badger skins are different. They made shoes and shoe, le shoe, uh, shoe uh, soles out of badger skin. I mean, uh, uh, these, uh, these, these things, and they were porpoises. And you say, well, where in the world would they get a porpoise? And uh, you know what? The Nile River runs right into the Mediterranean Sea. And where, where could they get badgers where, or porpoises? Hey, porpoises have tough skin. Uh, they fight off sharks and things like that. I, I saw Flipper do it one night on TV. And I, I mean, he was, he was doing a job on those things. You know, but... but these, these, these animals that God created, uh, the porpoise. You say, well, I, I don't know about that. That just doesn't seem right. Well, that's what, that's what the Egyptians used for shoes. They made their shoes out of porpoise skins. And, uh, and, and where, where had they been? They'd been in Egypt. And so what did God do? He, he told them, whatever you've got, what have you got down there? Uh, they brought all kinds of, of porpoise skins. Out of, out of Egypt when they came. And uh, so the fabrication of this thing, when, when, you, when you look at it, there's absolutely no reason that anyone should think anything wonderful is going on in this place because it just doesn't look like uh, a place that is going to have uh, the God of all creation living in it. And that's, that's what he was, this is a place for him and so the covering of this tent of rams that was was ram skins dyed red, and then badger skins uh, or porpoise skins above that. Now, now we, you know, we could be wrong on that. Uh, and uh, I'm like old Doctor Henry used to tell us in in, uh, in Bible college, brother. He he told us that uh, when he gets to heaven, he'll let us know exactly what it was that he was God, God was talking about there. And, uh, and I think uh, that was one of the most astute and astounding uh, answers. He was never wrong when he told us that. Amen? And uh, so then the, the fabrication came to the boards and the sockets that were on the walls of that, of that, uh, that tent, that tabernacle that God had made. He, it, all, the, all of those things that were above, now, now they're, they're building it up. This is the first time I've ever seen a building built from the top down. Have you ever seen, have you ever noticed that? Uh, they built this thing from the top down, you know. I, I was always told that, uh, you know, you don't build the roof first and then build the walls up, you know, because uh, it's, it's hard to get the roof on the top if you're going to have it, you know, there. But that's the last thing you build. But he, God doesn't do things the way we do them. Have you ever have you noticed that as well? God does things the way He knows is best. So He tells them uh, to to start with the roof of this thing, and then He tells them how to build the boards that go around to hold that roof up. And uh, the fabrication of those boards it was to be made of that that uh, that un uh, uh, that, that immortal 
type of a, of a board. A board that's, that, doesn't, uh, that, that lives out in the desert. Uh, the, the, the roots go deep in the ground to get the moisture. And, uh, and those, 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 uh, those trees, and there were acacia trees or shittim wood. And, and in that, uh, they, 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 they made these, these boards uh, that stood up uh, and, and went all the way around this, this tent except in the front. And so they, they made enough boards uh, to, to do one side and then another side, and then they made boards to go across the back, and they made uh, two separate boards to be the corners, and, uh, and so they, uh, they had all those things done, and they had all of the sockets made that, that were going to be uh, used. And by the way, those sockets probably weighed about 100 pounds apiece. You know, I, I, they must have had some, some pretty good guys out there to, to move those things around, uh, you know. And, uh, and I, when they got ready to move, I bet those guys looked at those things and said, man, look at all those things we got to move. we got to pick every one of them up, you know. That, and, uh, you know, what God, God gave them strength to do it. But they, they, uh, the, all of the things that we see in this, uh, in this they, they were making it now. They, these, they were building these boards. They were building. Boards were like 15 cubits tall. I mean, what's that? That's, that's 30 or something. That, that's, that's pretty tall. And, and as, they, as, they, as they made these things, it, it, uh, they, they, they were to make them where they could be connected together in such a way that they'd make one solid wall with, without any gaps in between. Now, have you ever tried to put together uh, some, something and, and, it, and it is supposed to go together like this, and by the time you, you get ready, it's, it's like this, you know, after you've put it together and you say, something didn't go together right here. I didn't do something right. So you do it again and it comes like this, and you, you say, well, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm not going to be able to do this. And, and then you get one of your grandchildren over there. You just do this, Grandpa. You know, put it right there like this, and this goes on the couch. And then, and then you, look, you feel like, what, what just happened here? <laughs> you know, it was, you know, when, when, we, when we look at things, God looks at it from up there, down. He's, he's looking at it from his perspective. Uh, we're looking around to try to figure out why uh, somebody else isn't doing this instead of us, and and we we uh, you know we really need to 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 get back into the thing of of just trusting God and going ahead and and doing the thing. So uh, each one had two tenons on the bottom of it, and they they fit exactly into these sockets that that were made for it. And all the sockets were made of silver, and uh, I mean, sockets of silver. I mean, that, that's 100 pounds of silver right there. Silver, silver on today's market is 20, $21 and something. And you imagine 100 pounds, that's, that's, a, lot of, that's a lot of silver. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's uh, $21 for a, an ounce of, of silver. Now, if, if, we, if we were to go to the, you know, to the, to the bank or whatever and say, I want to buy... Uh, gold coins or something, you know, and if they had them to sell there, they, they would tell you what the price is per troy ounce or all, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, then, then you'd, you'd buy whatever you could. But, but here, that, it was just the weight that they had. And the, the weight, uh, they usually had a uh, circular weight that they put uh, on their scale, and then they would put on enough of the shekels to, to get, uh, or the, the silver to get it to come up to that weight. And then they would know how much this was, this was, or what it was, uh, you know, what it was worth. Uh, you know, to God, uh, gold is really not that valuable. I mean, he uses it for payment. Amen. So, I mean, it's not, it's not like he, he has to have that, but you know, 29 talents, uh, that's, that's a lot of gold. Uh, when, when you're talking about uh, 
uh, that's uh, 29 talents times 2,000. That's that's a lot. You know, that's a, that's a lot of of shekels in the sanct- shekel of the sanctuary. And uh, you know, when when the when we we get to the point where we're looking at this uh, by by the monetary kind of thing, we've missed the point. The point is that God did, did this. He numbered everything. He weighed it out, and, and he, uh, he determined if it was enough for the job to get done. And that's all. It, it, wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with how much money it was worth. Because we really don't know to get today. Uh, I saw in, in Dr. Schofield's uh, the 29, uh, 29 ta- uh, talents of, of gold would be worth somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, $29,000 or something like that uh, on, in, in the, uh, well, the way gold was priced at that day. Today, it's, it's a lot more than that. When it's 18, uh, $1,842 per ounce, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Uh, they, they make a, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot about that, but it's, it's really not something that God was real worried about. And the, where did God get all the silver for, that, for those sockets? Well, he had all of the men that, that were uh, uh, above the age of 20 to bring a half a shekel according to the measurement of the sanctuary. And they were to bring that and they were to offer that to the Lord. It took 603,500 men to make up enough silver to make up enough to, to make all of these sockets that were made for this tabernacle. Now, some of the, some of the uh, sockets were made of, of brass. And the reason they were made of brass was because they were at the, the beginning uh, of the opening of this uh, curtain that went all the way around the, temp, the uh, tabernacle courtyard. And, uh, and those, those that were in the front there they were all of brass because that's, that speaks of judgment. And judgment was going to happen when they walked through that gate and they presented their animal and they, uh, they took the animal and offered it for their sin. And uh, so all of these things. Uh, so we, uh, the, the, you know, the fabrication of this thing was, uh, I mean, I don't know how long it took them, but, uh, you know, they didn't have saws. Uh, they didn't have uh, nail guns, you know, to, to shoot the thing in and, and uh, screws to, to screw everything together. They, this was made without one nail or one screw. I mean, everything that they made was, was coupled together in such a way that it, that it was perfect. You see, and who else could make something perfect other than God? I mean, man cannot do that, and so they overlaid all that with gold, and they, uh, and then they. Uh, the next thing we see is in uh, verse thirty-one of chapter twenty-six, where the fabrication of the inner veil was according to the word of the Lord given to Moses, and we see, we see exactly what the, God wanted. He said, "I want, I want it to be done with blue and purple and scarlet. And I want it to be done on fine, fine linen. I mean, real good." And I want you to weave some gold threads into that. And, he, and uh, so he, he had it all uh, uh, made so that there would be uh, no doubt about who was going to be the occupant of that, that next room that, they were go- that you would go in if you went through that veil. I mean, there would be no doubt about it. It's God. All right, and so the, uh, the, the fabrication of that uh, that was uh, made, and uh, and they made four pillars of shittim wood, overlaid them with gold, and the hooks that held up the the, the, the veil were of gold, and uh, they cast four sockets of silver for the pillars, and and it, it was a perfect place for God to dwell among His people, perfect place. Some people might think, you know, well, it didn't even have a floor in it. I mean, what was the floor? It was just the dirt, the dust, the, the sand of, of the desert. Ah, but what a better place for God to dwell in the midst of his people. And he was, he was identifying then with his people as well 
as, as identify, let, having them identify with him in worship. Now, worship is, is what we're going to really see about in the book of Leviticus. So when we get to, to, to that, that's the worship book. They had to be taught how to worship, you know? And I think sometimes we as Baptists have missed the mark on, on teaching our, co our congregations how to worship God how to worship him. And so the, the fabrication of the, the inner veil was completed, and uh, then the fabrication of the outer veil, which was on the front of, this, the, of the tabernacle of the building. Uh, and, uh, and so the, this, this was uh, of, made of blue and purple and scarlet, fine twine linen, needlework. Uh, they had five pillars on it with, with their hooks. Five that tells us of grace. And so it was a place of grace for men to go into. If man could go into there, which man could not, but the, the, but the representative for them could go in, which was the priest, and they could go into the holy place, and then the, the high priest once a year could go into the most holy place. I mean, one time a year. I mean, that was it. You think, well, do you mean they only worshiped once a year? No, they worshiped Every time they brought a sacrifice, they, they worshiped because there was, uh, there was uh, grace being given out to them. All right, so we, uh, in, uh, in chapter 37, uh, we have the, uh, the outer veil being made, and they, they made, now they've gotten this, this whole structure uh, is, is, to be, is to be completed. But then they began to do, do the work on the inside. What went on the all the way into the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant. He uh, fabricated it of this acacia wood according to the design that God gave to Moses on the mount, and uh, you know, and the, they 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 made it exactly. I mean, exactly as God had told them to make it. They, they didn't they didn't add uh, one uh, one inch to it. You know, you might think, well, you know, they, you know, they, they didn't really have good measurement back then. They, they, they didn't really uh, have good ways to. There's no way they could make it exactly like they, they did. But they did, and God, uh, God gave them the ability to do it. He, they, he, he, you know, they knew what a, t a cubit was, even if we don't nowadays. I mean, how many cubits in a span are you? <laughs> you know. And uh, you know that you know we 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 don't go by that, but but God uh, gave them the ability to to do this, and I think that's why they only had two men that were that were ramrod in this whole outfit, and that it must have been by their measurements. And I believe that's why God chose those two men because they had perfect measurements to measure a span. Span was this much from here to the tip of your finger. Now, some people's hands are bigger than other people's, you know, but, but uh, you know, God chose a man who had an exactly, had the exact span that they needed. And then, and then the, the cubit, it goes from your elbow to, to the end of your finger. Some people have longer arms than other people have. You know, how, how are you supposed to know what the real cubit is? Well, I just go ask Bezel Leel. And uh, he'd tell you, this is it right here, you know. And I think Bezalel went around and, you know, and, and, and he, he went around like this all the time. <laughs> all right, this is, this is not right. Uh, you you got you to gotta get, let's go back in here, boys. We got we to gotta make this just exactly right. Notice that he, uh, he made the, uh, uh, the, the mercy seat of pure gold. It was one beaten. Uh, just one complete thing, and uh, he made the, uh, the the those angels that came over and their their wings interlaced at the top. That that was a it was it was just amazing how that they could do this, and it could turn out exactly as God had presented it to them in their minds. And and that was from the mind of God to the mind of man. That's how it was done from the mind of God to the mind of man. 
So Bezaliel made the table of showbread. And uh, I'm in chapter 37, by, by the way, so don't, don't give up on me yet. <laughs> and uh, so Bezaliel made the table of showbread. And uh, what was that table of showbread for? It's hold the bread. That's all it was. There, there wasn't any, anything we could, you know, you talk about how, how uh, God had, uh, had caused them to do this for this and the, the, this, this reason and that reason. Well, it was to hold the bread that the priests were going to eat. So they, they did. And uh, Bezalel made the incense altar. Uh, and uh, the, uh, you know, that, that whole uh, golden can, candlestick that they made, <clears throat> golden candlestick, uh, that, that golden candlestick was made out of one beaten piece of, of, a, uh, of gold uh, that, that, was, that weighed, uh, I believe it was one talent. Yes, he used one talent of gold to complete the work. And Schofield said in, in, that, in his day it was $29,085. That's a lot of money. In the, in the day that Schofield was, because Schofield was talking about, you're talking about 1909. 1909, or, or right in that, that, uh, that, that re region, and, uh, and $29,085 worth of gold was what it required to, to make the mercy seat, or the, the golden candlestick. And, and when, you, when you looked at it, I am guarantee it, it, it was a sight to see. It wasn't just something. I mean, it was, it was special. God didn't just do things just so he'd have light. He, he wanted it to look nice, too. He had almonds on it and knops, and I don't know what knops were, but, they were, but he had a bunch of them on there, and he had all these things that, that went together to put this, this, this seven-fold golden candlestick together. There's, there's three on this side and three on this side and one in the middle. And they, they made this, and it was, that was to, to give light to the tabernacle, to the, to the holy place uh, inside the tabernacle. And so Bezalel, he made the incense altar next, did it just like God had said to make it. And uh, he, he, then, he, then he made the holy anointing oil. So not only could he do... Uh, all of these things, he could do the work of the apothecary or the pharmacist that, that could put together these things to make them exactly as God wanted them to, to be done. And, uh, <clears throat> and so everything was done uh, and, and made so that there would be a, a glorification of the Lord in everything that was done. And Bezalel, when he made that holy anointing oil, he did it so that uh, he compounded it so that it would uh, be exactly according to the design given to Moses on the mountain. Now, I don't know how some people can do, do the things that they do, but, uh, you know, without God giving them uh, the ability to do it, the talent and the, the skills that they can do these things. It's, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, so in chapters uh 36 and 37, we see him, he's come, they've, they've built and they've made all of these things, all of the furniture that goes on the inside has now been made. All of the things, the, the things that go on the inside of the tabernacle and the tabernacle itself has been made, but, but the outer court has not been made yet. Uh, we'll see that in chapter 38, the, the altar of burnt offering and the laver of brass. These, these are the things that go on the outside. But all the things that go on the inside, God is now, uh, it's, the work has begun. The work has, has, has started. They're, they're making these things, and they're, 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 it's going to be completed. And uh, so next week we're going to be looking into chapter 38 and chapter number 39. And those two uh, chapters tell us uh, of the completion of the, the, the tabernacle. Uh, the, the, the numbering or the counting of all of the, uh, the, the things that were made uh, that, that they used to make this tabernacle. And, uh, you know, and the fact that it's, uh, you know, if, even, if, even if it did, you could count it up and, you know, we could figure up exactly how much it would cost on today's market. And it would be 
probably way more than we would ever be able to think of or know. Uh, you have to be, uh, you have to work for the Federal Reserve to go that high, I think. I mean, that's a lot of, you know, that's a lot right there. You know, of course, you know, our, our Congress is, uh, if they want some more money, they just say, all right, y'all print, print some more. You know, we don't have to have anything to back it up. But we'll, we'll see that uh, there, there's something to back up all of this. Uh, and it's, it's the Lord God. Chapter 38 and 39, we'll see the, uh, uh, him, him making the, uh, uh, the altar of burnt offering and all these, these outside things. And uh, we'll see the, uh, the making of the high priest uh, off of things, things that he was to wear, the garb and everything. All right. Tonight we're uh, we're we're getting close uh, to uh, to the to the finishing of of Book of Exodus, and you think, well, you know, we we've, we've been through. Uh, I think I started this like last April, and uh, and we've going we've been going through all of these things that God has has given to us to see the pictures and the types of the Lord Jesus Christ and and all of the things that we saw. And, and all of these things are to teach and tell us that God was working then just like he's working today. He was doing the same things then that he's doing now, saving souls. I mean, they, 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 were, they were lost souls in Egypt, and, uh, and God saved them all. How did God save them all? Under the blood under the blood uh, that was put on the doorpost and the lentils. Where were they baptized? They were baptized in the middle of the Red Sea as they went over. And then they went out into the, into the desert to worship God. What a wonderful thing to know that God can still be worshipped today just like he was worshipped then. Let's pray. Father, we love you today and we thank you so much for the word of God. We ask that you'd help us now. And give us the strength that we need today to continue the work and to do the work that you've called us to, just like they did when they built this tabernacle and they built these things. They, they, they worked until the work was done. And uh, the same thing happened, Lord, with Nehemiah. When they built the wall, they, they worked. And how did they finish it? They finished it because the people had a mind to work. And they finished it in record time, 50-something days, they said, that they finished the walls. And, and what a wonderful thing it is to, to know that we can serve a holy God and a, and a loving, loving Lord. Well, thank you for all you do for us now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're at prayer time now. Amen. <laughs>